Well, welcome back to Monroe Live. Today we are excited because we have recently received our new Model Y from Austin, Texas build with the 4680 batteries. Now, we decided we wanted to do a slight comparison video between this new version before it starts to get torn apart today and Antonio's Model Y, which is a June 21 build. So we're gonna look at some of the differences that we see between the two and then go through some of the quality points from the new Model Y to see if we see any differences. So let's get started. For the new Model Y, we know that we have a Giga casting. Now, the first one that we tore apart had a lot of stampings and weldments that created the entire front end. Now, this can result in tolerance stack issues. Anytime you have multiple components coming together at each junction, at each intersection, at each drill point, at each weld, you increase tolerance. The more positions that you have, the larger your tolerance stack. That can cause issues because when you're looking at the final fit and finish, you see the symptom at the joint, but you don't exactly know where in the entire system the problem exists. With a Giga casting, in theory, you should see much better quality because you have fewer points of possible tolerance issues. But let's go ahead and look at some of the things we see on this vehicle. First, I would like to show this front driver side fender. Now, as the fender comes out over top of the front fascia, you can see that the fender overhangs the fascia. It's a slight overhang, but it is a mismatch. So I wanted to see from Antonio's vehicle, do we see the same type of condition? So let's go over to the white one. So from a Fremont 2021 build, we basically see the same condition in the same position. All right, so if we are out on the driver's side, is there a corresponding issue on the passenger side? Let's start with the new Model Y. Well, look at this. It's the same type of condition, but it's in the other direction. The fender is inset to the body, creating a little shelf on the front fascia. There is a gap, which is slightly inconsistent at the front, but a consistent gap going towards the rear. Let's look at the 2021 Model Y. Actually, this is much better than the new Model Y. It has a nice flush appearance, but it is a very tight gap. As a matter of fact, I do believe the panels are tight and rubbing on each other. But in general, I would say that this is a better flush condition than what we see in our new Model Y with the Giga casting. On a hood or on any type of a reared closure, this is most likely where you'll see the worst build conditions. Because we have the tolerance from the body sides, but then we have the tolerance of manufacturing the rear closure and then fitting those components together. You'll see that at the front. If you were to sight line down this window edge, we have a fairly consistent gap on the window edge. Then looking at our body rail to this beam here, let me get out a straight edge. If you were to look straight at this seam with a straight edge in place, they're pretty much flush, nice and tight gap. Let's go below and look on a side view. Also, a nice tight gap. But let's look at the driver's side. A fairly consistent gap on the top edge. However, going on the side, that's near a three millimeter offset on the sides. Now, again, there's many things in this entire construction that can lead to this type of an issue and this is just the symptom this is where it is shown it doesn't mean that this panel is wrong or this panel is wrong it's that something in this entire system is wrong continuing down the lift gate we have a separation between the tail lights look at the gap at the top of the tail lights as it closes up going down this is a very wide gap very inconsistent gap is this meant to be that way Let's look at the passenger side to see if we're seeing the same issue. And no, we're not seeing the same issue. So let's look at the Fremont 2021 build. And no. So we do have an inconsistency on the new 2022 Austin build in the rear tail light. It could be the taillight itself is out of position, one or the other, or somewhere in the overall construction in our new Model Y. Boys and girls, 
We're in for a treat. Yep, it's not every day that I expose myself. Hey boys and girls, this episode of Monroe Live is brought to you by our friends over at Henson Shaving. Here at Monroe & Associates, we get excited about good manufacturing. The razor itself is made in Canada at an aerospace machine shop. The advanced machining allows the razor to be produced with incredibly tight tolerances. Those tolerances really matter when the blade exposure is so small. This very small amount of blade exposure eliminates cuts, nicks, and irritation. I really like the built-in channels. It's easy to clean with a quick rinse under the tap. The blades themselves are recyclable and only cost about a dime. You can buy them from Hanson or you can get them many other places online. Turns out the blade wasn't the issue. It's how you support it that really counts. Now for the ultimate test. The ultimate test for any guy that's uh, trying to shave is uh, what his wife or his girlfriend thinks. So I have my lovely volunteer. <laughs> this is my wife, Susan. Okay, so now, what do you Let's think? Let's see. Oh, 40 grit to like 400 grit. Nice, <laughs> 400 grit. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There Kissing we go. Kissing smooth. There we are. And now Very we nice. have it. Everything is good. Uh, Except I got soap on my eyes. So Antonio, this is your Model Y from the 2021 build. Now, of course, you've had this for a while, so you've been able to see some of the different features. Yes. What are the things that have stuck out to you of noticeable features that are different between the two, which is only a one year gap in production? Uh, well, let's start with the very obvious. The red is very beautiful. I love it. <laughs> um, some of the things I have noticed is the back trim in my car has a uh, polypropylene side rail whereas it is carpeted in the new one. Where this one is fully carpeted all the way to the ground. And I got the white interior because I was living in Reno at the time and the summers were intolerable and leaving a car in the summer would be impossible with that black trim. But that's a style choice. Um, I've also noticed they've added the uh, what did you call it? A shelf? Parcel shelf. Parcel shelf. Uh, mine has just a standard back, nothing special. Just some cleaning supplies. I try to keep this fairly clean, except from living on a dirt road. Can't help that part. This parcel shelf is nice. I like this. Um, as they were pointing out earlier, uh, this opened, but it'll hit it. However, this has a natural fold point in it and rests nicely as you can prop this up. So, nice little feature I kind of wish I had. So there's always a debate of what is the purpose of the parcel shelf? Is it something that gets in your way that you want to throw out? Are you meant to put things over top of it? But for most people, it's visibility protection for the things that you have. Right, if I had something valuable in my trunk, I don't want someone to see it and try to bash through my window to get it. And then of course, protection from the sun, though we do have a tinted windscreen. Uh, one thing I noticed whenever I first got my car is the double pane glass. It was, it's pretty obvious. So it's just two pieces of glass about the same size, glued a heater together. Uh, the new one has a much, uh, slicker build it's almost imperceptible we have a thick piece adhered to a thinner piece and i'm thinking that might be either for vibration or sealing against the elements so you don't get a, a fog line along the edge yeah i mean it could have been a cost save it could have been a weight reduction save. if they determined that they did not need two full thicknesses to get the lamination that they required on a small note, I've also noticed the wipers sit a little lower and more protected by the hood. Whereas on mine, they're just a little bit more uh, 
proud. Proud, yes, good word. It's a small thing, but it is a visual difference, possibly in aerodynamics. So on the Rivian, I picked on them quite a bit because of their wood grain. And it was the conditions that they decided to put their wood grain in causing visible A-surface cut lines that were right in the operator view. Now, this has a same condition requiring a cut line, but it is mostly hidden. If you were to follow this edge wrapping around, you would see the veneer cut line going forward in vehicle. But because of the position they chose to have that type of condition in, it is not visible from the driving position, whereas the Rivian was right in front of your face. So not a very detailed video because of course we have already disassembled a Model Y. There are a lot of carryover features that are still here that were in our previous version. But the big thing is the new casting and these new batteries. And this vehicle is going to start disassembly two days so that we can get to that battery as quick as possible. So there will be more videos to come and more information to come. So I hope you enjoyed watching and if you would please like to subscribe to the channel so that you can see our future videos. Thank you very much.